Well, some things are just so Idaho. Some things like this. Every spring, thousands of sheep travel across Highway 55 in Ada County on their way into the foothills to graze for the summer. Drivers stop. They watch people line the street. They also watch, take pictures. It's a very Idaho thing to experience, especially in person. But that thing may be a thing of the past. Sheep ranchers in Idaho are worried the sheep may disappear from the state, saying the domestic sheep market has gotten so bad, they're not sure they can see a financial future. It has to do with what's happening outside of Idaho, outside of this country, according to two Idaho ranchers who are part of a national effort to save domestic sheep markets. Here's Joe Paris. Sheep ranching in Idaho is a part of the fabric of the state. How about a high level example? Governor Brad Little's Scottish born grandfather, Andy Little, came to Idaho in 1884. It's before Idaho was even a state. Came here just to work with sheep, and he eventually earned the title the Idaho Sheep King. And sheep ranching attracted talented immigrants to Idaho from the Basque Country in the early 1900s. Sheep actually started to outnumber people in the area because of the success. If you fast forward to 2023, though, these days, Idaho sheep ranchers feel they're on the ropes. If we don't get a handle on this, we're done in time and not that much time. Henry Echeverry is a sheep rancher out of Rupert, Idaho. Simply put, ranchers like him continue to battle heavy imports of lambs from places like Australia and New Zealand. He explains import lamb outfits are seeing benefits from currency exchange as well as fewer guidelines that Americans must follow by law, making American prices just more expensive. We understand what the situation is. We don't produce enough to meet the needs of the country. However, we we need to be able to sustain our operations with a superior, a better product. And that's, that's all. It's not just us, heck, we can walk away. But we do love this industry and we'd like to, and then they do this, this country a lot of good. This is my range right here. Frank Schertz is a longtime Idaho rancher. You might recognize his work. He and his team bring sheep across Highway 55 every spring. He points to the market share of lamb as an indicator of the issues. It's what, 70, Three to 77 percent right now is foreign lamb and they just take more and more and these range outfits they're gone they're gone and they're not going to come back. Ranchers around the country are now pushing for this a petition published by Protect American Lamb a project under the auspices of RCAF USA Sheep Committee. It calls on U.S. Trade Advisor Catherine Tai to consider changes to the industry to support American operations and that includes legislations or regulations ideas for tariffs and tariff rate quotas, a way that ranchers believe can even the playing field. It's not going to change within a year, but I think they could get some legislation or something to, to not necessarily legislation, but some kind of regulation to uh, offset the influx of so many imports, so many tons of lamb. Ranchers are pointing to this graph published by RCAF. It shows the decline of sheep inventory as well as the number of operations in America, all steadily falling since 1992. Ranchers tell me the playing field of domestic first import is simply unfair in this field. We're the guys that pay the taxes and property taxes, uh, and taxes on our income and, and whatnot, you know. And uh, those guys, like I said, they come in here duty free. <laughs> but that's the way we do it. Ranchers tell me they've been in touch with Governor Little about the issue and they hope that he will push the topic at the upcoming Western Governors meeting in November. It's a tough one for ranchers. They tell me this isn't a PR stunt. This is reality. OK, Joe, you mentioned Australia in your story there. So what is the difference between what happens in the U.S. and Australia when it comes to these, well, rules and regulations? Yeah, in places like Australia and New Zealand, for example, there's chemicals that they're allowed to use to keep away predators of the sheep. Well, the American government has outlawed a lot of those chemicals and those practices really dating back decades. So, for example, it would cost an American outfitter a lot more money to keep, you know, make sure all the sheep are taken care of, make sure that everything's under, under good form. Whereas in Australia, it's just so much cheaper because there's less rules. That makes sense. All right. Thank you very much, Joe.